Hello and welcome to Victory Chat with Jackie McKeever. My name is Jackie and I am your host of Victory Chat. On Victory Chat, we talk about, of course, there's a name in the title, we talk about victories. So we talk about um, all things that will help you take your life and your business back. So that means we talk about faith, we talk about uh, self-development, and we talk about business. Today, we're doing a collaboration on our, on my, I like to say our for some reason, anyway, on my a podcast and my YouTube. So I have fellow YouTubers um, and podcasters, Obedience Podcaster, uh, Ashley and Shantavia. Hello. How are you doing today? Doing great. Doing, doing amazing. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you? I am doing wonderful. So like we have like five questions that we're going to talk about. The topic is uh, faith over fear and uh, victory walk. So we're going to talk about uh, faith over fear, times when we chose faith over fear. And of course, this is victory chat. So we're going to, we're going to make sure that we talked about our walk of victory. Okay. So the first question and anybody can ans- answer it. Um, I do have a, a few scriptures and why my mind is on it. I'm going to give it to you all, but no, y'all going to hear it again. Um, the first, it is a Proverbs 29, 25, my favorite chapter, John 5, um, Mark 11 and 23. So the first question is, what does faith look like uh, for you today versus 10 years ago? And I'm, I'm not sure how old you are, so you could use less time, but just go a previous time because I'm 47. So that I'm, I was still grown 10 years ago. <laughs> Y'all want to go first? If not, I'll share my story first. Who wants to go first? I can go first. I can go it ahead. So I was 21. Well, I thought I was grown, grown. 20. I, I <laughs> Uh, 10 years ago was at the age of 21 thought I knew everything you know I had it all together um so at the age of 21 um I was even thinking about this last night where was my faith level at, at the age of 21 and I would say um I've grown up grow, grown up in church all my life but even at that age I can say that it wasn't activated it was just at mm. a it was just um me knowing God, knowing of God, I'll say that. Yeah. And then knowing that, okay, he's done it for this person. So I'm saying that I'm going to believe him for this mm-hmm. or to, you know, guide me through life. But it, was, it wasn't any activating. I was just wishing and merely hoping for it. So, but 10 years later, which is today, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, has turned up. You hear me? It's activated and and powerful. You hear me? <laughs> and tell me nothing is impossible without God. I'm seeing it for myself. How about you? Would you like to share, or you want me to go? Let me know, cause I I'm a storyteller. I'm 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 ready all day, every day. <laughs> My story is very similar to Ashley's. Where ten years ago, I was 18. So. I was a baby baby and I grew up in church and I was just going off to college at 18 and I knew who God was, but as far as a personal relationship, I did not have that. I know around that time, that's when I actually stopped going to church so much because I didn't have to, you know, Mm -hmm. with me being out of the house. Um, And I started to think back about, you know, when I was younger in the faith, I really didn't have faith. Um, and, um, well, what I'll, I'll share a little story time too, since you're a storyteller. When I started college, I started as a, a pre-dental major. I wanted to be a dentist. 
And so one day I was in my biology class and I was just like, this is not for me. And so I was like, I should do something that I really love and have passion for. So I changed my major to TV film. And so I'm in the classes, everything is going great, but I start getting more and more fear about actually doing that career because it would require a move. Mm -hmm. It would be like an unstable, it wasn't like a, in the healthcare field where you know, you guarantee get a job. And so moving in fear, I just switched completely from, you know, what my passion was. But if I had the faith that I have now, I would have been able to, you know, probably be working besides Tyler Perry right now. <laughs> so bigger than him. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That's your story. Go ahead. <laughs> it's no problem. But my faith now compared to 10 years ago is completely different to where I would walk in front of a situation like that just like with my head held high like I can do this so I wish I had the faith I have now back mm -hmm. then but you know everything works out um this was interesting because like I said um before we had hit record uh I, I've been excited about this collaboration I actually thought it was supposed to be yesterday and 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 it was today but anyway because I'm just excited I love to talk about growth and uh faith but we're t the question is 10 years ago but so I'm gonna give y'all a story uh background my Christian background so I got saved and I first found God, I was 10 years old. And uh, when you hear that, and I don't, I don't tell everybody that, but I'm going to tell y'all that because y'all listening. So shh, don't tell nobody. But anyway, so, <laughs> so, um, 10, but 10 years ago, um, I was 37 years old and I had experienced different types of depression so and during that time to be honest um even though I was a Christian and the reason why I brought up to 10 years old and I grew up in church just like you all and I believe that God was a healer and God could do ev everything could happen with faith but I did not believe those things for myself mm -hmm. um because to be honest and I, uh, the things that I'm doing now, I saw back then when I was a child and, but it scared me, it scared me. And so I ran, I ran and I stayed in the background because being invisible, being invisible did not require faith. That's right being scared did not require faith and so i looked for places no matter whether it was business no matter whether it was family events personal that kept me in the background because i felt invisible i felt invisible and i was scared i knew i had the ability to come out of the thing uh, out of hiding but i was so scared so scared that okay if i come out behind and that those visions that vision that god showed me when i was a child is gonna come true and i'm scared and at the same time i felt like i was unworthy mm, yeah so that was part of my fear now now um because i believe there are there's different levels of faith mm -hmm. So I'm not in that place I was 10 years ago. Now, I'm not going to lie to the audience and say, God ain't still, I'm not still a work in progress because God is working with me. Because like right now, I'm, I'm writing my book, Absent Parents. And um, even though those things, and this was a project that I had did started four or five years ago. And I laid down because, you know, I'm still hiding, coming out of depression. I was coming out of major depression, still hiding, and I wasn't ready. And, um, you know, revisiting this book, I just feel like the Holy Spirit has been 
revealing things to me about who I am and where I can go even more. And I'm like, well, God, I thought I was through with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I, y'all, I don't know if y'all pray and talk to God like it's your best friend, but I'd be talking to God like I'm talking to the girlfriend. I thought I was through with that. And it over and over so one of the things that spoke to me even writing the book and everything you know uh the holy spirit was you give me more and i'll show you more mm. and so that's one of the reasons why john chapter five is one of my favorite chapters because uh for those of you who may not know john chapter five in john chapter five People would gather at Bethesda. I'm giving y'all the homegirl Generation X version, right? So I, I love to read the Amplified version, but this version, I, it's, it's, the, it's the scripture, but I'm going to say it in layman's turn. So people would gather at this spot, right? Because the angel would come and stir the water, it, it, uh, stir the water, and this was in, in Bethesda. Yeah. So people would have all types of elements. They'd be crippled, you know, you name it, they will go because they, once they got in the water, they would receive this healing. They would be renewed. They would be refreshed. Whatever it is, they'd be better than they were when they came. Yeah. So it was this dude, right? So he had laid up in his, in, in, in that, in his in his element i'm gonna say in his comfort zone in his comfort zone and he was crippled he had some he had some disabilities and fast forward because the man had laid up in this thing in this comfort zone he ref at the time when Jesus approached him and asked him, will he ask him the question, will he be made whole? Because it's always a choice. When we choose faith over fear so that we can begin a new walk of victory, it's always a choice. We can lay in our comfort zone because our comfort lies, in our comfort zone lies depression. In our comfort zone, we lose our power. In our comfort zone, Change doesn't occur, occur in our comfort zone, but we have to come out. And just like many of us, when opportunity knocks or when change comes, when breakthrough is knocking at our door and Jesus knocks at our door every day in different ways, he speaks to all of us. Instead of saying, yeah, Lord, I take that. I'll take it. You giving it to me? Bring it on, bring it on. He started with the excuses. Because with the excuses, it was like he was choosing, he was choosing fear over faith. Mm -hmm. He was, he told, he literally told Jesus, listen, I would have got in the water, but Billy Joe and them, Billy Bob, uh, June Bug and them wouldn't help me get into the water. And so Jesus being the God, he, what he is being the Lord, you know, being who he is, the ho the homeboy, uh, somebody that more mature, that loves us so much, even though we be giving excuses that don't make sense, gave him the offer again. Will you be made whole? And even though the scripture doesn't say he said yes, he had to say yes, because Jesus told him to take up his bed and walk. And that's where his victory walk began. So less than 10 years, my victory walk began. And that's why you're listening to me today. Because I said, yes. Yeah. When God asked me, will I, will I show him more? He'll give me more. Mm -hmm. I said, yes, when God said, do you want to make be made whole? And I received a new re revelation of that of that chapter even though i've read and heard it since i was a little kid so um the next question is share a time when you discovered you were not walking in faith but choosing fear i do have another example that was an example but 
I do have another one. I told y'all I'm a storyteller. Who want to go? <laughs> I go ahead and go. So I talked about this probably during. Hmm, it was it was I think your Promises of God series. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a we did an episode oh about uh, what a money resides, <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> so. As I was preparing for that episode and studying that, God revealed to me that I was definitely not trusting him in my finance journey. You know, I'm in the process of trying to get out of debt and, you know, how you're in church and you're like, um, I am going to be debt free. You just say it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I was doing. I was just reciting because that's what I hear everybody do in church. You know, I see everybody saying, oh yeah, I'm going to be debt free. But I wasn't really believing it in my heart. I knew I had a plan, but in my head, it's like, that plan's not really going to work out. Supernatural increase isn't really going to happen for me. I'm not that person that it happens to. And God really revealed to me that I wasn't really trusting him in that area. I needed to not say, hey, I'm going to be debt free. I needed to step into being debt free and already claim being debt free you know as my pastor says you know you need to pray from the high place mm -hmm. and so pray as if it's already done and I wasn't doing that at first I was just reciting what I knew I was supposed to do since I wanted to get out of debt but I wasn't really believing that he could get me out of debt mm -hmm. so that was one story of me just realizing that hey you're not walking in faith you are actually walking in fear because are you really like giving everything over to God you know mm -hmm. you know you, you pay your tithe every single month but are you really like are you doing it because you know that's what you're supposed mm -hmm. to do are you Correct doing you. it because I really trust you and I want to give a seat to you to increase it so <laughs> yep and I'm still in that journey of trying to get debt free so I'm still in the thick of it yeah <laughs> But it's just the whole increasing your faith every single moment that you start to feel that fear creep back in. It's just go back to the word and affirm yourself that, hey, what's going on around me isn't true. I know that it's already done. I'm just waiting for the revelation of that lesson. So that's good. You mm -hmm. want to go? Sure. Um, for me, um, take it back to what was it? Maybe March um this is a reference from one of our videos where i say that it's a whole story time so i'm gonna give <laughs> go you the ahead condensed, go ahead i like it the condensed version but it was the video when uh i shared that god told me to quit my job mm -hmm. and um even before i talked about it in march when march 1st actually told me that um march would be my last month at my old job and I was just like, immediately, I was just like, yeah, we're going to go to a new job. We're going to make some more money. You know, we're going to get that. You know, we're gonna, uh, glory to God. And then immediately, I thought about, you know, what if God is at, is requiring me to leave this job mm. and not work? Or like, what, you know, what if I won't have another job lined up after this? And immediately, I chose fear. <laughs> and so it led to me working through, I think I left that job in May. Mm -hmm. I left in May, about me at May. And every day after that, I chose fear because I was just like, you know, that's foolish. You know, why would God tell me to leave a job and I not have the provision, you know, set up for another job? Because all I know is work and you go to another job to work you don't just sit at home and do nothing that doesn't make sense I've been volunteering and working since the age of like 14 so that's all I know so um it, I ended up having and I shared it in the video I ended up having not having spending quality time with God because I knew in the back of my mind he was gonna tell me turning mm -hmm. you to edge. And I was just like, you know, if I don't spend time, I won't feel the conviction, right? <laughs> <laughs> foolish, it's foolish. But, you know, a lot of things are happening. It's the final straw, you know, I love my sleep. So I had a horrible <laughs> dream and I said, mm. okay, 
done. I'm going to sit with you and you're going to show me and you're going to come for me and you're going to provide for me. Um, but in those moments, in those weeks, I was definitely choosing fear because it was the fear of the unknown. You know, we have so many, that's so crazy because we were just talking about that Sunday with our youth group. Um, being fear of the unknown because at the beginning of the year, I'm just asking God, I want purpose. I'm tired of just living life and just working and just existing. I want to live purposefully. And in the span of a couple of months, I, I'm working fully in my purpose. It, it, it ain't been easy. <laughs> but faith level is amazing. Mike, I would I would do it again. I just said that the other week. I said I would do it all over again. Just not right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> just getting to know who, who the father really is and just to experience him even more and to grow in the faith level that that's like I said before like you can't tell me anything I don't have to see it to believe it I know it you know it's a knowing now that is good um so my other example because I I told y'all I got a lot of stories because that's just been a real big area that God has been walking me through um these last four or five years or whatever like since coming out of depression major depression um so one of the reasons why proverbs uh 29 and 25 is uh was given that scripture talks about it says but whosoever trusts in and put his confidence in the lord will be exalted and safe Mm -hmm. um so with a a woman with a woman being safe is very very important very important and the reason why i bring this up about when you do your walk i mean that's part of faith you have to be confident in and the, and the word of God and what the Holy Spirit is telling you that just like with your message that this is going to take place, you know, you got to put all your energy and, and effort in that. And it's not always easy because I remember a particular time I had this dream. Okay. I told y'all God speaks to us all the time in different ways so i had this dream and i told y'all this is part of my faith walk right so i had this dream and uh it was a real bad dream okay so in the dream uh i had this shelf i had this shelf and in the shelf i had uh okay so i've been in relationships uh i've had boyfriends I've been, I'm, I used to be married. I got divorced. I've had friends that I'm no longer friends with. So whenever you experience a loss, especially when, when it comes to people, sometimes you can, you can lose your confidence. It doesn't matter who the people is. Could be people in church, people at work, people in your environment. So this particular time I had this shelf and in the dream, even though the people were gone, okay? And in my mind, I thought, you know, I got past it. I had been carrying with me pieces of what, of things that had happened in that area of my life. So the people were gone. No longer was I exactly in that place, but I was keeping a souvenir and it was Mm -hmm. keeping me from moving forward. And in the dream, the Holy Spirit was telling me that he was trying to take me to a new area, but I can't take those things with me because those things hinder me from moving forward. Now, this dream occurred during the time I was coming out of depression. I had to come full force. And I was crying in the dream. And when I woke up, I was crying and I was praying. And in the dream, I started tearing. I ain't had no hammer. I ain't had no hammer. I ain't had nails. I ain't had no tools. And I was like, God, how can I get rid of it? And in the dream, it was like, you built it. 
You down. built it, you can tear it down. And so that's when, when I started learning about the, the power of words and how God has already given us a, a, a power and authority. And so it, with my bare hands, and I was like crying. I was like, yeah, I'm going, y'all ugly crying. I'm going, I'm going to do it, Jesus. And I started throwing, I started throwing everything and destroying. And in a dream, I had destroyed the whole shell and put it on the curb for uh, the, the, the trash people. <laughs> it was very detailed. The trash yeah. people. And I began to you know, search within, that's where my self-development, because part of increased faith or part of going where God wants you to go, you have to work on self, you know, because God can remove those things, move you out of those places, remove those people out of your life, but it's up to you to take them out of your heart, to, to give them to God. And that's when I learned how to have more confidence when it comes to Christ. I had to confidently give my issues, give what I was feeling over to Christ. Because he can handle it. Because he can handle it. But I had to be willing to take, to destroy that shell or destroy, some people might refer to it as a wall. Just so you can enter the new place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, for example, you're a school teacher. Until they do their lessons or whatever it is, you can't go to the next grade. <laughs> Not at all. No. Okay. Um, the next question is, does faith look different in different areas of your life? And explain your view. Y'all want me to read it again? It could be anywhere. You can just feel free to jump in. I can I can say where uh, a different another area. This is work. If uh, why y'all think, and I'll go ahead and talk. So I was at work one time, and it had to do with confidence too. So I had to move from one area, one office to another. Should be simple, right? Mm -hmm. I had so many mixed me messages. I really didn't want to move to that, that other office, even though it was a better office. <laughs> this was a fit. This is, it was a better office because I felt like they were throwing me away. Why they want me to move in that office? <laughs> like for real. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I was feeling like they was throwing me away. Oh, they put me in that office to get rid of me. <laughs> it's a better office. Yes. It was a better and a bigger office. The office I was in, I was sharing an office and I didn't huh. want to go. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want to go. And that's the same thing that we do when it comes to other stuff. You know what I'm saying? God trying to move us to something better. Trying to elevate us. To be and, we, and we want to be comfortable and we want to have some type of feeling. Sometimes it's, it, it, it ain't even that. It ain't even, it ain't even like that. You know, mm -hmm. I was feeling like I was being thrown away because somebody was taking something from me. That office didn't belong to me. That business didn't even belong to me. But I was feeling possessive over something that didn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. But the thing that should mean something didn't mean as much as it should have. So for me, for me, it for me, um, faith does kind of, sort of, and the, and the physical looks different because we're you know when it came to the office I was able to say okay and, and I had got so bad I wouldn't even let nobody help me move <laughs> you just being uh -oh. <laughs> I was I wouldn't even let nobody help me move you gonna make me move now I don't want no help I'm, I'm moving I don't want no help I'm struggling I'm dragging my stuff 
from one office to the other. It took me a long, it took me eight hours to get my office moved by myself. The whole day. And, <laughs> and people kept asking me, Miss McKeever, you want us to help? No, I don't want you to help me. <laughs> Oh gosh. And after it was over, I was like, oh, this is a nice office. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty nice. I didn't even know you was nice. You're pretty nice. I don't oh. know why I was acting like that. I should have left. I was so tired and hurt and so. <laughs> you probably was choosing fear over faith. I was. I was just out. That's why I said this is a great topic for me, Chad. I got so many stories. It, and that just, I mean, that was so to me in that it, it didn't look, the, it didn't, uh, uh, it really wasn't different because it was the same, but it, it was just more humorous. It was more humorous. And, you know, to the naked eye, it may have been, oh, that's different. That was an office. But it was, it's, it, to me, it was, it's really the same. It's the same. Um, it's a different area, you know. Um, yeah. shoot I know um, like as you were talking I thought about um, my difficulty in waiting and it's not like you know waiting in doctor's office or anything it's kind of like waiting on the Lord um, I, I can honestly say like my faith level is different in that area and it's something that I'm still working on because um, I know last year I was dating this person and I pretty much knew that that person was not the right person for me, but you know, I was going to be stubborn and I was going to stay in it because if I let this person go, then I gotta, I gotta wait on the board and I don't have time for that dating life. You know, I can wait on him and everything else, but I, I didn't hear stories where people get married when they like in their fifties or sixties. And I, I just, you know, I don't want that, you know? <laughs> So I'm gonna make make my will happen. I'm, my will be done. <laughs> you trying to make yourself get to the fifty? Right. You don't want to wait, right? <laughs> I realize that now. Back then, I'm just like, oh, I got time for it'd this. It'd be funny. It'd be funny. Yeah, you can look back at yourself and be like, you, what were you think? What, what, what do you think? What were yeah. you thinking, girl? Mm -hmm. So I, it's definitely it's different. Um, faith can look different in different areas. I mean, because at that same time, I was doing the podcast and. I was in it strong and I was believing in him. You know, we were getting what three to 10 views a video and we were still doing it every single week. Yeah. So my faith was strong in that area that he was going to see it succeed. But then in this other area in my life of dating, I wouldn't trust him in it and just let this thing go and let his will be done. So I definitely different levels, it. different levels. I got you. Yeah, yeah. We can have different levels. Cause yeah. like, you got an example? Oh, no, I was just going to um, share mine, but you go ahead. Go ahead. Uh-uh. Go on. I talk <laughs> all the time. Go on. <laughs> but no, I was just going to share an example. Um, so when I saw the question, it made me go back to the time where, um, and I talked about it in the video. A guy told me to quit my job. I think it was the updated video. Mm -hmm. No, year 30. 31, I think it was. But I was saying that, like, after that experience and that whole growing in faith and, you know, uh, just knowing of God and just growing spiritually throughout of that, I received a, um, I'll say an unction um, from Holy Spirit telling me, because I had a moment I was just like, whew, I'm glad that's done, you know, going to work as a teacher. But he was also, as soon as I said that in my mind, he was just like, attach your faith to, your faith to something else yeah. because you never want your faith to go dormanted mm. what was the reason you went through all of that and growing and then be stagnant and then have an up and down mm. I, our faith should go we were just doing graphic look at this look at this <laughs> come on to be a steady increase it should never be a a, a, a drip not a drip but a dip in your face that should be always steadily progressing mm -hmm. within christ that's good <laughs> that's good girl that's good go ahead i thought we was gone i thought you was i was gonna like go on, lift off don't take it on 
it it's has over, to, girl. It never stops. That's so good. That's the thing about God. It's just, and I was just like sharing my experience the other day. Like, that's the thing about, I was just meditating on the goodness of God and the, the best thing about it. Like, you can, ex- I was just overjoyed with where he's brought me throughout the year. And to think like he never stops getting better. Yeah. Like we can still cultivate this relationship and it gets better and better. And, and the things that, you know, he'll continue to do and just who he is as a person, you know, it's just so good. And it just, it's just make so sure good. it's like, go run, girl. Mom, stop. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Okay. <laughs> the next question is, are there different levels of faith? Explain your view. Um, well, referencing, you know, the previous questions, yeah. I, I different levels. Yeah. But we talked about this on one of my episodes <laughs> called Get Off the Milk. Mm-hmm. To where, you know, we have this thing where you're a little baby in faith. And then, you know, we have like this seasoned saint. Yeah. So um, as a Christian or yeah, as a Christian, we should be thriving to get off the milk. Just get off of, you know, that that minimum relationship with God and yeah. get deep into a relationship with him, you know, where our life is literally dependent on him. And it doesn't have to happen overnight, just like with a baby. They don't get off milk yep. overnight. And in that episode, we even talked about um, how as a baby, uh, well, when you get a little bit older and you get your baby teeth, they have to fall out. So, well, they have to fall out in order for your adult teeth to come in, mm-hmm. like something mm-hmm. even stronger. So sometimes on your faith level, you will have to let something fall off just yeah. to get something bigger. And once you get there, that doesn't mean, hey, you just end at that point. Like Esther said, you mm-hmm. should just keep striving to grow closer to him. And there's no cap on how how much you can learn about God um you know if you go to school you the highest education you can get is a PhD mm-hmm. the, but with God is no highest you always learn something new the same scripture can mean something yep. different in this season than the next season it's always something new so yeah. it's like constantly get off the milk you may have to start that process over you may get off the milk in one area in your life but then you got to go and start over in this area, get a new set of teeth, yeah. uh, fake teeth. I don't know, but <laughs> mm-hmm. I do believe that there are different levels and it's, you shouldn't be ashamed of whatever level that you're on. Yeah. Be comfortable. That in that don't rush out of that level because you may miss something in that season, but definitely be striving to get to that next level. That's good. And then just to piggyback off you, I'm glad you referenced that episode of Get Off the Milk. Because when you said that, it made me think about like, even in when I was younger, I, uh, you know, like I'm a, I'm a grew up in church all my life. That's all I know, church, church, church. Um, but even going back to when we first learned the 23rd numbers of song, <laughs> baby, Christmas time, I was, I know the 23rd number song, you know, I was quality for the family, family. And even now, even growing in that, I know it off memory, you know. But even now, me being 31, it means so much more. Totally different. Totally different. I was say, I remember when I was saying, um, you know, I, when I first realized that the Lord is my shepherd, girl, I couldn't go out there. I couldn't move from that first. I couldn't pay. I, I just started crying because I said, the Lord is really my shepherd. And I shall not move. I couldn't even make it. <laughs> not one. You hear me? So I think I think even growing in the knowing of God and even the revelation of like who God, yeah. you know, and just you know, even now, just even getting off the milk, I don't know. I that's not my only stance or my only word of God that I know. You know, I continue to, you know. May uh build up my weapons with God's word because that's our that's, we fight fight spiritually you know we it's not against uh principle well, it's not weapons but it's more of a spiritual battle so I I continue to just gird myself up with the uh, the word of God and just to know who He is and just even in 
even in chaos, I can have a horrible day at school. The kids don't want to act right. I can still have peace. I can fold yeah. my arms up, fold my arms up, and just like, okay, God, you going to show me. Because there's plenty of times I'm like, holy, you see that child right there? Let me get this marker on him. <laughs> but you know, just growing in the faith. Uh, I don't know where I'm going, but no, just going. keep going, keep going. It's a conversation. Go ahead. It's good. I'm listening. Yeah, I was just that was it. Just growing in the faith and just knowing that, hey, I don't have to, you know, be in my quiet time to talk to God. I can talk to him while I'm driving. I talk to him on a daily basis. I'm like, Lord, I'm a new teacher. You know that, right? You put me here, right? I need some guidance because I don't know what I'm doing, but the kids love me and I love them too. <laughs> can you give me some kind of influence and in how to plant some kind of seeds, how to show, how to represent you today, how mm-hmm. to represent you today, because this is what I'm here for. You called me to it. So you must gonna lead me through it. Mm-hmm. So, um, just knowing him and just walking in him continuously, knowing that he's, you know, never leave, he's going to never leave us nor forsake us. So just calling on him at any moment. Okay. Go and ahead. That, that, that in, yes. it doesn't have to be like one specific moment or one specific area. And another thing about God is he's not going to, you know, be petty. Like we as humans probably would do like, um, well, your faith level is not where I need it to be. So whatever you're asking for, you can't get it right now. Yep. You're not going to do that. Huh. So that's why I say don't be ashamed at the level of faith that you're in. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's nothing wrong with it. Yep, that's right. That's good. That's good. So my answer, are there different levels of faith? Of course, there's different levels of faith. And, and I, the thing I like about God is that he he works with us on our level (laughs) our level um and because we all different and i didn't discover this till a few years ago is um i didn't discover this uh, a few years ago because i was like god why would they listen y'all i had a moses moment i really did like uh i was Okay, so I was with this prayer group, and uh, so I was present. I say presenting. Well, part of it, you know, you uh, there's preaching before they actually go in prayer, and so this particular time, I was asked to give a word, and in my head, I was like, I don't know why these people would listen to me. That's the same. I, that's why I call it a Moses moment. I don't know why they listen to me, God. I don't even know. I don't even. I'm working it out on. I'm working on me as we speak. I don't know why anybody would listen to me. Nope. You know, I sound country. I I go. I might say I make up my own. Um, my own whatever. My oh, own saying my own saying I, I i mean i'm i i can i can actually speak without using slang and all that but i don't really know why these people want to listen to me why would they listen to me you know yeah um and so i did it anyway and i was feeling like i was feeling some type of way because i was like all these years all these years done went past at 10 i should be i should be doing this and mega this and mega something or whatever i shouldn't be just figuring these things out and during that particular so i went and i did it right and it was the first time i did it you know the holy I, i i stopped talking because the Holy Spirit was ministering to me because I Mm -hmm. discovered I thought I was running away from God and I ran full circle so I I ran around the circle right to him where he could really get the most potential and he can get the most potential out of us when we freely give our all to him so that's what I mean by running full circle just ran around you weren't going nowhere you still in God's bosom. You were still there. You were still believing. Your walk doesn't have to be as the same 
as Shay's walk or the same as Ashley's walk or the same as my walk, but you are still a value. Just like in the church, the, the ushers, the ushers are just as important as the people who sit on the pulpit. The people that's in the pews are just important as the pastor on the pulpit. Yes, there's different levels of, just like it's different grades, there's different levels of faith and it's all determined by where we let, where we let God in. That's what mm-hmm. he operates in. That's, that's right. when he do the full work. I, this is not written. This is just spontaneous. I just want to, uh, so for instance, there's a, a Bible verse, a Bible story where um, Jesus was preaching and they had, y'all know the loaves of bread and the fish story, right? So uh, the disciples said, hey, just the home girl generation X version, y'all. Hey, Jesus, we ain't got enough food to feed all them folks. Send them home so we can eat because we hungry. We've been preaching and teaching and doing all this stuff all day. I'm ready to eat. Mm-hmm. And Jesus didn't, didn't send the people home. He told them, we got enough. Mm-hmm. You got enough to feed the multitude. And that was a breaking of bread and a parting of fish and the multitude was fed. And when, when I first looked at that verse, the several times, cause you know, they, they preach that all the time in church. Oh, but when yeah. I began a, a new level in my faith, I began to understand that mm-hmm. although physically these people were given bread and fish, but in But at the same time, physically, they was given that. But spiritually, they were given hope. Somebody cared enough to share what them having little, because you know the amount, with them so that they wouldn't be hungry. Mm -hmm. They they, they began, and, and and the scripture doesn't outline that, but I just started thinking, when somebody gives you something that you need, even if you don't ask for it, how does that feel? Anyway, I ain't trying to preach. I know we got lots, we got one more question to go, but it is different levels of faith and God be working on me and he'll continue working on me. <sighs> So number five is how do you walk in faith? Yeah, I prayed over these questions. I was like, you know what? I know I want to do this collaboration with these ladies. God, you're going to have to give me the questions to say. You're going to have to give me the title. I don't know what to say. I just know I need to do this, do this because I believe that um, when you guide me to people, it is not by accident. So give me these questions. Give me a subject to talk about. And these are the questions that came out after prayer. So how do you walk in faith? You keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> you keep walking. I mean, <clears throat> so I even with, dealing with different um even with dealing with i don't know okay emotion i'll say Mm -hmm. that even with dealing with um life just with life you're going to have emotions and and life life is just going to be life Mm -hmm. it's going to be life all of the time and you act when when i saw this i think about how do you incorporate life things it's gonna come with faith and it, it made me think about how I do it. How is my life, you know, how do I incorporate faith? And then even, you know, just having a different mindset on things, a mindset and also spirit about things because, you know, just being a little transparent, it's hard um, with being a new teacher. I keep bringing this up because it's so new. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard being a new teacher with COVID restrictions and, the kids are not used to 
being in a classroom setting, um, discipline issues, all, calling parents, report cards, and so many demands from the districts and so forth. Um, it's hard. And it can be, it's a really stressful time for teachers and also administrators and people in the school system and also everybody else. Um, but how you deal with it, how do you still remain Christ-like? How do you still represent Christ? and be the light even in those moments when you're feeling frustrated <clears throat> and honestly you just ask what I've been doing I'll just be honest what I've been doing is just asking for wisdom on how to do it because a lot of things I don't know but you wouldn't know it from looking at me everything that I do it's it's from Holy Spirit every like I shared before it's it's like God, how even working in our new student ministry, we have, have every Sunday, it's like, God, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't even know what I'm going to say before these kids. And it happened to me Sunday. I'm like, I looked at the scripture and you got to give me something because I don't know what to say. And when I tell you, it worked out perfectly how everything just came together, how uh, I was partnering with another young lady that was great and how Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit was just bringing in scripture. And I was just like, Lord, I just said that. I didn't even know what I just said. But to really look at the kids' faces and say, okay, I see a seed right there. It's been planted. Yeah. And I don't know, just going back to the question, just how do you walk? How do you walk in faith? And honestly, the only way is with Holy Spirit. That's the short answer. But also knowing his word and knowing who he is, even in the time in this crazy world. Um, having a knowing of who, who he is and to stand on his word, having that foundation, that um, that firm foundation, of, even if it's a little shaky, just continue mm -hmm. to just confess God's word over your day, over your situation, over your circumstance, whatever it may look like. Just declare God's word that, hey, I am, I, I said every day, I'm getting out of debt too. I'm debt free. God told me you, you're going to be debt free. And I said, okay. And every day I'm going to declare, even though I have to, I'm using my credit card. I'm the limb. I am the lender, not the borrower. I, I, I uh -uh. no wealth and riches are in my house. That's what it's going to be because that's what God's word says about my life. Mm -hmm. You know? So I would just go back to saying, just confessing God's word, even though it doesn't look like what how it's going to be yeah. just you know if we go back to the definition of faith it's the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen so even though it doesn't look like what you want it to be mm -hmm. cover it with the word of god C continue to cultivate it continue to water it. continue to let god that's life. good it's just to to grow that seed you're, you're planting seed your word of god you water it take care of the seed mm -hmm. don't just it doesn't look like you, it, it what you want it to look like yeah continue to water it plant the seed of faith continue to water it with god's word and then the light of god will will make it bloom going back to our mayflower series continue mm -hmm. to stand on god's promises yeah that's all right. sorry oh you're good no okay i was, I was like, enjoying it i was like okay come on preach you preach okay go ahead um, and I, I love that you brought up Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because when I read the question, I said, oh, I'm going to come back to that. Right. One. I said, oh, Lord, you are stop yeah. me. And I walked away from my listen. <laughs> <laughs> and then y'all, well, if y'all watch the show, y'all know I love naps. <laughs> so <I> was, <laughs> Me too. And Holy Spirit reminded me of yield. Yeah. Because mm. um, I use this um, prayer method, pray. And yield is the last thing. And it always pops up randomly, just yield. Um, and we did a, in our last series, The Potter's Plan, I talked about yielding and I studied that word deeply. And that's basically how I walk in faith. I yield. I yield to what Holy Spirit is telling me. And the definition of yield is to allow, to concede, or to admit to be true. So, you have to allow God to come in. You have to allow him to educate you, 
and you have to concede against your flesh because mm-hmm. we're born of flesh and so that's yep. what we want to do naturally we want to do the complete opposite of what it is to be like christ but we constantly have to concede to that flesh and of course we have to admit god's word to be true admit what we believe in and faith to be true but then i looked up another definition the driver's definition of yield you know when you see the little yield sign and it means to let up uh, let me read it right means to let others on the road go first mm-hmm. Come up to an intersection, you let whoever is going by go first. And I believe that's what, what we should do in life. When we come up to a road, we should yield. I'm like, okay, Holy Spirit, you go up ahead of me. Let me know if I should go right now, if I should turn back around. Let me know what's up ahead on the road come on. for me. Come on, Shay. And I'm going to stay right here and wait till you get back. So just being in faith is letting God walk ahead of you. Yeah. I'll never forget the um, demonstration my pastor gave when he was talking about faith and being under the will of God Mm -hmm. is having an umbrella. Mm -hmm. You're under the will of God and you're letting him go ahead of you. You can hold that umbrella out and the storm is never going to hit you. You know, everything that's going on around you may be a hectic storm around you but you're under this protection. But if you don't let God go ahead of you and let him lead you where you should go, then you're just out there in that storm with no protection. So that's how I allow myself to walk in faith is I just constantly try to yield to what he's telling me to do because I know his plan is the best plan. Even if it goes back to me hating to wait in the Mm -hmm. dating area, I'd rather Mm -hmm. sit here and just be single then get into another situation that's gonna wreak ha- havoc over my life yeah so just yield so yeah. one simple word yield. yield that's good that's good I kind of want to uh, piggyback off of both of y'all because um <laughs> I really didn't have any answers uh until the uh the podcast because that's how I, I mean you know I had the scriptures and stuff like that and the questions but I didn't have my answers but as we uh as y'all talk this is my answer to it um how do you walk in faith uh the thing that came up to mind was there is a study method for the bible right and the acronym is SOAP mm-hmm. scripture observation application and prayer and that came up to mind when it came walking and faith because um scripture is not just studying about God and getting to know God it's actually teaching you how to use your words and the power of words the power of your tongue the power of your mind the power that you have and with it within yourself yeah observation You observe things by paying attention and or listening to what God is trying to tell you. Now, I mentioned previously in this in this uh, broadcast that God speaks to us in different ways. Right. Um, In the dream, he was speaking to me about what was hindering him, because during the time I was praying, God show me, give me more give me more help me tell me where i'm supposed to go i was crying out for purpose i was crying out to to be that person that i saw in the dream Mm -hmm. right but i had to uh that was part of my walk because it's different areas there different areas of faith so because there's different areas you may be stronger in one area i had to observe what god was teaching me what life was teaching me, what I was learning about myself. And then application, how am I going to apply what I learned? You're reading Mm -hmm. the word, how can you apply it? You're living life, how can you apply it? uh, you, You said you've learned that, you know, you want these things and you know that you, you can't go about it on your own means. You got to do it the way God outlined you to do it because God yeah. knows your plans. They're already set. You got to go where God tells you to go. You got to say what God wants you to say. I'm going to give you all this quick uh, quick thing. 
quick story. And because the next step is prayer, prayer. So let me tell you, I was working at this nursing home and generally I worked overtime. I worked overtime. But this particular period, they gave me, okay, they gave me three days off in a week. And let me tell you, I was praying. I was bugging everybody. I said, listen, I got bills to pay. I can't be at home no three days. <laughs> I need, why come I can't work days? Why I'll mm -hmm. stay old because I was working like three to 11. Why come I can't work days? I'll work at 16. Okay, y'all ain't got no position. What about I stay overnight? You know, I can't be off for three days. I got be I got three kids to, to pay. God, I don't know what's wrong with these people, but they know <laughs> I you know I got three kids because you gave them to me. <laughs> you and you know, and listen, you know I got bills to pay. I got kids, they hungry, I get hungry. Okay. I got to pay these bills, I got to feed these kids. I got stuff to do. I don't know why. God, please make these people change their mind. You said I, I should. Like, yeah. Okay, I was. Girl, I had my scripture. God, you said anything I ask in Jesus' name, it shall happen. <laughs> I'm asking you in Jesus' name, God. Let me get, make them let me work these three days. <laughs> but let me tell you what happened. I prayed and prayed and was believing. Okay, here it is the day before I had them three days off. Okay, let me ask them one more time. Can I work? You know such and such ain't gonna hardly come in. Don't let me get, in to get them hours. I said, okay, okay, okay. I might can't get the three days. Let me get at least one day while I was negotiating. <laughs> they didn't give me no days none okay they didn't get I was off all three of those days and you know this is part of my walk you know even though I had prayer prayer my answer was no because God had other plans so something happened at that nursing home those three days they mm. started investigating because wow. when I came back to work they had investigators at that nursing home they invent everybody that worked with these patients in that area, they asked questions. They said, Miss McKeever, could you come to the office, please? I said, Oh, I was so scared. What I got coming to the office for? <laughs> anyway, so they asked me these lines of questions. They said, Do you know any, you know about anything that occurred? Because we now they believe that what occurred either happened on the first day the second day or the third day I said um and most likely it happened on the first day I said uh first day or the second day and I said no ma'am no sir I have no idea they asked me why I didn't know I said well I was off the day before it happened and the day after it happened I told them people I said I was praying and begging for three days but right now, in this moment, I'm glad God told me no. I'm glad y'all told me no. Because I would have felt, so, even though even though I wouldn't have had anything to do with it, I would have felt bad for that occurrence because I would have felt like I was obligated to keep it from happening because mm -hmm. that's where I was. You know what I'm saying? As far as my faith. So my answer to that, you just walk you walk one step at a time. Even in John chapter five, I just believe when the man got up and, and walked, he probably walked with a limp. You haven't walked in a long time. You may have had the ability a long time ago, but here you are starting, to, you have to learn to walk again. So you mm -hmm. may not can run, but you're, you, you're limping. Well, go yeah. ahead and limp because as you walk, that muscle builds up, okay? And the walk, the, 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 the limping becomes a skip and yeah. the skip becomes a run, okay? And each step, each way is more, is, is important. It's important. So you just do it. Know that it's not gonna be perfect. We're not perfect beings. 
No, my walk may be different than your walk, but walk anyway, do it anyway. Yeah. Step out on faith anyway. Do it no matter where you've been and what you've done. Do it anyway. Build that muscle. Work on yourself. Ask God, because I always ask God. I told y'all, God, what, what, what questions? I know I need to work with these people because for some reason, I ain't even following these people. I keep seeing their stuff. I know I'm supposed to work with these people. What is the subject you want me to do? What scripture you want me to give? What questions you want to give? And when he gave you the answer, be in obedience. Yep. You Even if you don't understand. I don't understand why you, I don't understand why you got me walking down this Broadway road, but I know I'm supposed to meet somebody else. God, I'm putting it in your hands. Yep. I'm putting it in your, these, listen, I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm believing. Anyway. Where the God says that his thoughts are not his, it's not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. So yeah. I believe that God has birth eye view. He can see over. I, I just can see what's in front of me, that he can see oh, like yeah. what he's leading me. So even though I may feel like a little maze, he got to enter this, a, a great destination, final destination for us. That's yeah. right. And just and I, I like want to connect some dots because um through us talking I got a revelation. Go um, ahead, come on with it. <laughs> As to you know why God was on you so heavy because it, it it literally answered one of my prayers. So I've been in like this back and forth with you know should I advance to the next level like you know get it rid of not get rid of but you know stop being afraid to leave my job because I am very comfortable where I'm at. You know, it took me, what, two years to learn everything I needed to know at work. And I'm just like, you know, I'm good. Mm -hmm. I, I can learn everything. I don't, I don't need to go anywhere. My manager works with me. But through this discussion, it's kind of like, are you choosing comfort? Like you said, are you choosing your comfort zone over walking in faith? Yeah. So, from my point of view I would say that's why God was on you so heavy just because he knew at this point this is what I needed to hear to confirm what he wants me to do hey amen that's good that's good that good Woo, y'all if I went I got chills Woo! thank you Lord mm. so like I always tell people thank you for being obedient yeah <laughs> go and be obedient yeah <laughs> That is good. Y'all have anything else y'all want to say? No. You full, okay. you full, baby. <laughs> baby, full. Oh. And it's so funny because my word of the year is fearless. Yeah. Mm. And you didn't even know that. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. I want to thank you, Shay and ashley for coming on my podcast and doing this collaboration on youtube listen y'all follow these beautiful ladies they're going on an amazing journey and i want to leave a message no matter where you are no matter who you are no matter what you have done i love you and God loves you too. Mm -hmm. And this is Victory Chat with Jackie McKeever. Your victory starts here. Thank you again. <laughs>